This lesson deals with supplemental problem 2.5. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the chapter 2 supplemental problems on page 4. Wires in the United States are manufactured in sizes numbered according to the American wire gauge, or just AWG for short. As listed below is some data for copper wire at 20 degrees C. 12 gauge wire has a diameter of 2.052 millimeters, has a resistance about 1.588 milliohms per foot, and has a suggested maximum current about 6.618 amps. As the gauge increases, the diameter decreases, and the resistance per foot goes up, because you don't have as much wire for the electrons to move through, and likewise a suggested current. This is really has to do with the heating of the wire. In other words, if you remember that power is I squared times R, if you take this current and square it and multiply by the resistance, you get about 70 milliwatts per foot. Did it over here, you get about 44 milliwatts per foot. So as the wire gauge increases, the diameter decreases, the resistance increases, and the suggested current decreases. Landline telephones typically use 24 gauge wire. The lamps in your home are typically 14 gauge wire, and the wire that's used in your wall outlets is probably 12 gauge wire. Suppose that we make an electromagnet with 250 feet of 24 gauge copper wire. What's the coil's resistance, and how much current will flow if we place a 12 volt battery across this coil? All right, using the table above, for 24 gauge wire, see that the resistance is 25.67 milliohms per foot, and multiply that by 250 feet, so I'll get a resistance of 6.418 ohms. Putting a 12 volt battery across that entire coil, the current would then be by Ohm's law, the voltage divided by the resistance. And that would be 1.87 amps. Now if you go back and look at the table here, we're actually putting more current in that wire than it's rated for. So we have a problem maybe with that wire melting. And this is supplemental problem 2.5.